G'day, it's Matt from Crank Engineering and today I just want to do a quick video on bearings and different types and what they're used for. Okay, so common bearings you'll find in your motorcycle will be just straight roller bearings, ball bearings and tapered roller bearings. So let's quickly talk about each of these types, what they're used for, some information that you can find on the net about them, how you might look after them and that should do it for today. So let's just, these bearings, I'm not even sure where they came from and they are some Chinese knockoff, manufactured by the Huan Chi Bearing Group. So I've never heard of them, still in the packet. Uh, but there's an identification number on the packet here, 63072RSCVV2. This tells me a bit about this particular bearing. Here's another one that I've unpacked and this is what it looks like out of the packet, brand new out of the packet. So there's a, that part number is also on the, on the um, oil shield or the dust shield here, 63072RS. And HCH is the company in information and the same on the rear as well. So to find out a bit more, I've just gone to the Google machine, found this particular company and found the page that talks about these bearings. So it's a 63 series, so 6307, so 63 is the series. And a 07 really just uh, depicts the size. So 6300 is a 10 millimeter nominal diameter. Up to the 6307 is 35 millimeters nominal diameter in the bore. So this gives me the dimensions. So 35 millimeter on the inside, 80 millimeters across the outside, 21 millimeters wide. Um, this is some information about the shoulder that you use to support this bearing on the uh, on the sides here. And then let's, if you click the button for other parameters, you get some more information, including basic load ratings, uh, limiting speeds for grease and for oil. So this is good in grease to 8,800 RPM and good in oil to 10,000 RPM. It says it's got a complement of eight balls and the size is 13.494 millimeters and the basic weight is 460 grams. So about half a kilo for this bearing. So, uh, just on the, for example, on the load ratings, so this says basic load rating in pounds and then it's got kilonewtons. So they've even got the, the measures for the load ratings mixed up. So I don't really trust anything that comes out of these guys' website. So those, that, that, that uh, designation of 6307, that's common. The bearings are all made to a common sizing scheme. So 6307 is common. So if I just Google 6307 and then I select uh, the results from Timken, for example, which is an American bearing manufacturer. I can get a 63072RSC3, exactly the same part number, and exactly the same dimensions. So it's a 35 millimeter bore, weighs 450 grams, outside diameter is 80 millimeters, radius in here is 1.5, and uh, load ratings, uh, dynamic and static, 33 kilonewtons and 19 kilonewtons. So that's you know a massive amount of load these things can can support. So if you're going to select a bearing as a replacement for something that's in your motorcycle, I would highly recommend you look for a reputable manufacturer. And I mean I've used Timken, NSK, SKF. Uh, those three manufacturers uh, would be probably my first choice. There's plenty of others. But do be aware that there's lots of knockoffs on the internet as well. So you've been told you're buying a Timken bearing, but if the price is way too low, then it's probably a knockoff. So these are made of quite high quality steel. Well, expensive ones are made of quite high quality steel. Uh, precision ground and finish and heat treated, and that's why they cost so much. But if you look after them, they'll last a long time. Okay, so that's a little bit about the bearing sizes. So the styles you might see on your motorcycle would be just a straight roller bearing. Now this one's got uh, shields on both sides of the balls and that seals the lubricant in and keeps dust and dirt and everything else out. So here's a roller bearing without any shields. And I think this came off uh, the rear wheels of one of my Harleys, for example. So a, the balls are re retained by the cage that's uh, pressed around them 
on each side and they just roll in there. Now, uh, an, a roller bearing like this is only designed to take a load in this direction. So it rotates around a shaft, but it's really designed to take a load that way. Now, if this is a wheel bearing, that makes perfect sense because if these are sitting inside the wheel, you've got the road pushing up from underneath and you've got the weight of the rider pushing down from the top. So this works just fine for a wheel bearing. In applications where you've got both load in this direction and load in this direction, you need a different style of bearing. And that's what a tapered roller bearing is used for. So rather than having balls, it's got tapered rollers, funnily enough. And they're also retained by this pressed steel cage. And they sit on this cup and are retained at the back here by a little shoulder. And then you have a separate cone which is the mating part. So this part might be pressed into the neck stem, for example, on your motorcycle, and this part would be slipped over the stem, steering stem. So looking after these bearings, um, they don't like dirt. You put hard bits of dirt in with metal and dirt always wins. So the objective is to keep them clean if you can. So that's why they do have some bearings supplied with shields. Otherwise, then if they aren't any shields, then you might have a maintenance task to remove the bearings, clean all the grease out or oil, uh, wash them out, and then re-lubricate them and use them again. So they're good for many, many thousands or millions of revolutions. And of course, their life depends on how well you look after them and how much load they might see in service that's pressing on them and pushing down on these rollers. That's about it for today. Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments below and I'll see if I can help you out. But this is just a really brief introduction about roller bearings. Thank you.